Shalom, shalom viewers. Greetings everybody, greetings everybody. Welcome to Voice of Thunder's YouTube channel. This is your brother, your host, your friend, and you are dearly uh, fellow York servant in the gospel. Joe Kennedy is my name, Voice of Thunder's as always, the divine expression I am in Christ. Now today you can see, I don't want to talk much guys, you can see for yourself, the number keeps going up by the grace of God. This is our Sunday Kingdom Transformative Conversation and here we have a host of guests that are going to be able to decode with us some of the mysteries we have in the Kingdom of God as per the leading of the Holy Spirit. We are going to take strictly, uh, if maximum, 25 minutes and we are done by the grace of God. So quickly, I will begin from my left wing, father's left wing. We have a very beautiful, as you can see, I hope, as you're watching from whatever you're watching, all is well. The beauty <laughs> is in the eyes of the beholder. <laughs> <laughs> and we are just full of the Holy Ghost. So don't mind the laughter, the joy. We are just swimming in the spirit. So on my left wing, we have one of our very own from all the way from Embo County. Embo County. Can you imagine today? In Mombasa, we have an Emboberian, if there's such an English. Embuan. An Embuan. <laughs> With us, <laughs> by the grace of God, Pastor Sarah King and Joey, and she's going to say hello to us as we proceed. Karibu. Talk to our viewers. Praise the Lord. My name is Sarah King and Joey. I live in Embu. I have a very strong that meets once in a month. For women and interdenomination ministry for women in Nairobi. And I thank God because of uh, giving me an opportunity to be here in this episode together with my brothers and share a few things concerning the kingdom of God. Thank you, Pastor Joe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You heard it yourself, from yourself, from the horse's mouth. This is a royal stallion horse, female kind, from heaven. So I will kick back to my right wing, father's end. To my right wing, uh, we have our very own, oh my friend, this is a brother I've always desired to have him in this kingdom transformative discussion yes. and conversation. A mystical brother, a brother I've loved, I've worked with, we've done ministry together. His name is Pastor Joseph Gatoto, JG in short, man. And he's here with us all the way from Nairobi, my goodness. In the words of our own in Kenya, JKA Live is going to be hot. <laughs> <laughs> you can be so sure. <laughs> the bench is hot. <laughs> yes. I want my cameraman to put it on Joseph. Joseph Karibu. I said, Joseph, talk to us. Say hello to the viewers there. Thank you so much, brother. <laughs> we thank the Lord. It's a pleasure to be here. We've been planning this for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord has actualized it uh, in his perfect time. Amen. Uh, as I said, my name is Joseph Kavoga Toto. I'm a pastor. I am also, I also have a ministry called Integrated Life Ministry. And it's a pleasure to be here and to just be sitting with this great council of men and women of God. So I'm really excited Amen. about this. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Joseph. JG is the name. We thank the Lord for him. On my close end, on my close end right wing, we have the billionaire, the man that believes poverty came by Satan. <laughs> <laughs> this is the billionaire in the house, the prophet of God, the youngest prophet in town, by the name of Caleb, the one who told Moses, if you don't give me my mountain, I will take you out. So talk to us, <laughs> Prophet Caleb. <laughs> yeah. Say hello to our viewers, brother. Yeah. Shalom. Hello, everyone. We thank you. Thank you for viewing this uh, channel from this moment. Yes. Uh, as you are going to discuss about the mysteries of the kingdom, we pray that you'll be blessed. Amen. And, uh, you'll be touched in every area of your life. Amen. As the spirit leads. Thank you so much, Prophet Amen. Caleb the billionaire. Now, nearby him is another one. 
a dangerous prophet. <laughs> Don't be deceived by the height. <laughs> this is a dangerous prophet. <laughs> from all the way from Embo, a brother of love, the ego of Embo is a man I've come to love and honor. And also to some levels of degree, a comedian. <laughs> so we love him, we honor him. Kalibu Sana, the prophet of God, Samuel Njagi. Say hello to our viewers. Hello viewers, God bless you. My name is Samuel Njagi. I am born again this evening. I love Jesus. Welcome to the kingdom conversations tonight. Amen, amen. And finally, as I wind up the greeting session on my close left wing, we have Son of Fire. I don't know how to put it better than that. <laughs> Son of Fire. Mwana wa moto. Kutachomeka kwa hiki tineo. And I believe God is going to touch lives in a very mighty way. We have our very own um, a lovable <clears throat> man of God. And uh, my co-pastor in the Ministry of House of Thunders International Pastor, Patrick Bosaka. Say hello to our viewers and welcome, sir. Hello, God bless you. Karibu ni sana. Amen, it's amen. gonna be hard. <laughs> That's it. He has just spoken another version of utterance. We will be able to record what that heart or heart is. <laughs> the glory of God. We are such yeah. a joyous people today. The house is full of the Holy Ghost and we thank God also for our um, friends and uh, our partners who are watching, I want to salute all my subscribers, all my YouTube subscribers and financial partners to this YouTube channel. The Lord richly bless you. And I don't want to forget also thanks to our host who is hosting us at this beautiful palace. I will not mention their names for purposes of security. So I will just let you know we are hosted in one of the most powerful homes in the city. And you can see it's so royal, it's so heavenly. The atmosphere is conducive for the decoding of the word of God. So I want you to take your pen, your notebook, your Bible, your iPad, your laptop, whichever gadget or material you're going to use. We are about to skyrocket in dimensions that are only known by Elohims. So God bless you and welcome. Now, precious saints, my dear <clears throat> guest hosts, today I want us to begin i want us to begin i want us to begin uh from the book of second um corinthians i want us to begin from the book of second corinthians um chapter number um five chapter number five and verse 16 and 17 second corinthians chapter number five verse 16 and 17 the bible says and now henceforth, we regard no one according to the flesh. We regard no man according to the flesh, though we once regarded Christ in this manner, we do no longer consider him after the flesh. Then verse 17 comes in, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new is come. The old is gone and the new is come. All this is from God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation to which that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and he has committed to us, um, to himself, not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So precious saints, I want to begin from my father's end, Pastor Joseph. Uh, please tell us into your kingdom perspective. What does the scripture, according to the leading of the spirit uh, from your own depths of the realms, what does the scripture, what is the scripture telling us when it says, henceforth, we regard no man according to the flesh? What's your approach on that particular verse in verse 16 of 2 Corinthians? Please speak it from there, sir. All right. Uh, 
The interesting thing about this is when it's, speak, it's speaking about not regarding anyone according to the flesh. Yes, sir. That is, uh, God is taking us past mm. the terms of soul embodiment. Because whenever a soul is manifesting in the physical realm, yes, it must take a body. Yes. And it must carry certain, uh, it must carry certain realities. Mm. Like for instance, when you see me, a male of a male. Yes. And when you see, uh, when it comes to souls embodying in the physical realm, it's male or female. Yes. And there are certain appearances that I have, which if I was to sit with my brother, my sister, and my mother, yes, you would know without a doubt these people are related. Yes. So when God is saying we need to see past the flesh, that means we need to see past the physical terms of embodiment and come into knowing the soul and not just knowing the soul mm -hmm. but moving past knowing the soul in self-created terms yes to knowing the soul in created terms and wow. when you come wow. to created terms every one of us we are a dimension within a dimension of the being of god mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the dimension that i am yes is a specific intelligence of god it is a specific dimension within the dimension of God. And as a result, the person that I am, the Joseph that I am, yes, sir. is an expression, a specific and categorical expression of the being of God. Mm -hmm. And my life is to reflect that specific embodiment, to manifest that specific embodiment, mm. which has a lot to do with my spiritual name. Because my spiritual name, everyone's spiritual name, is a name. Of God, it is a name of God. God has infinite names, yes, and there are expressions of a specific name of God, Ooh. which is our spiritual names, yes. So he says we need to move past seeing in the flesh. You know my lineage, yes. You can know my brother, you can know my sister, you can know my father, you can know where I have come from, yes. But beyond that, you need to come and know me in self-creating terms, and then go beyond that and come to know me in created terms. And when you know me in created terms, you don't just behold me, but you also behold God. Because all of us, we are created to be platforms of the knowing of God. Mm. That when I behold the prophet Jagi, yes, and I behold him in created terms, mm. I will be beholding a dimension of God. Mm. And when I behold that dimension of God, my knowledge of God increases. My knowledge uh. of God advances. Oh, yes. So we have to go past the flesh. And we even have to go, uh, I want to say this, we even have to go past titles. Uh, uh, we have uh, to go past uh, titles. Yes. Because when you go past the title, the title, for instance, uh, I'm a pastor. Yes. But the fact that I'm a pastor, that pastorship, that pastorhood mm. is an expression of my inner self, of the created self. Yes. So there's the created self and has that created self, my consciousness, has expressed itself in this specific destiny of pastor. But there is more than the pastor. Yes. There is the specific divine intelligence that I am. Mm. And knowing that is beholding a dimension of God, mm. a dimension of his humanity. And when you behold that, there is an increase in the knowledge of the divine. Mm. There is an increase in the knowledge of God. Mm. So we have to move past the flesh. Yes. We come to self-created terms. We also see that and we move past that. Yes. And we come now into the created self, the person that I am, the I am that I am, mm. that is I. And behold that. And in beholding that, we will now see the destiny of my consciousness, yes. the destiny of my soul, yes. and now we will also see the aspect of God yes. I am called to manifest forth Hallelujah. into this realm of Hallelujah. men. Mm. Thank you. Mm. My goodness, wow. Wow. precious wow. viewers, oh my God, I'm, I'm <coughs> blown off. I'm completely blown off like, uh, what is this machine the women use on the hair? Blow dry. <laughs> I'm, I'm taken off, guys. <laughs> this is bombastic. What a revelation. Prof prophet of God, allow me to call you prophet. At this hour, Pastor Joseph, yes. just to get you into pers to get you into perspective and to make the viewer understand uh the utterances of the divine that you have just communicated. You are saying if I move past the flesh, there is the created term. 
There is the created self. Yes. There is the created self and there is the created self. There is the, the we move past the flesh. There is now the created self. Yes. Is self-created. Ah. The created self is self-created. Yeah, it's self-creating. Yeah. It's self-creating. Yeah, and that's 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 the manifestation of our divinity. Hallelujah. So yeah. this the self-creating does not cease creating, it evolves. Yes. From what we're saying. Mm -hmm. There is that, that there is that involvement yes. of this of the self-created keeping the move of it's like it's like peeling the onion. Yes. One layer yes. upon another layer. Yes. So the, the inner me is the divine me. Yes. That's what you're saying. Yes. There is that, that divine you. That keeps evolving. That now manifests. And communicates the intelligence that I'm crafted to reveal. Yes. My goodness. That divine intelligence that is a dimension from God that is still a dimension of God. My God. Thank you, sir. <laughs> that, that, that is powerful. That, that, that is very powerful. I don't know how to put it better than that. I don't want to, to add more curry powder. I don't, I let it be the way it is, but the grace of God, precious sake. And just to honor, um, uh, we are not, we, we, we are not, um, uh, you know, gender biased in any way. But uh, I would like to be able to balance this conversation by quickly jumping to Pastor Sarah and allow the men uh, swallow a bit of saliva as Pastor Sarah picks up some things by the grace of God. So Pastor Sarah, what is your perspective in as much as what Pastor Joseph has said in regards to what do you understand when the Bible says we regard no man, we consider no man according to the flesh. And remember, he says, though we knew Christ after the flesh, but henceforth we regard him no more. What's your perspective as far as the Spirit of God is leading you in the light of that scripture? I thank you, Pastor Joe. Thank you. I'm grateful for this opportunity to share Amen. my reflections on this. Mm. I am a pastor, and I also operate in that office of the prophet. Yes. And sometimes I find myself into teaching. Uh, I talk to women a lot, and I also talk to shepherds. Yes, yes. And I'd like to look at this in the angle of a shepherd. Yes, please. Now, when you as a shepherd, you have flock, mm -hmm. you have sheep that have been brought to your fold, uh, sometimes you may have somebody who was has crim had criminal cases. Mm -hmm. I've, sh I've shepherded people with criminal cases, uh, or people with uh, serious moral issues. Okay, I've shepherded people who are the Mpango Akandos. Yes, yes. I've led a few to Christ by the grace of God. And uh, I've also shepherded people who are who are looking nice and uh, well groomed. Well, well groomed, mm. no history, you know, stuff like that. And when these people come, because they have all come to the Lord, and you are a shepherd, mm. and you're supposed to shepherd them, you are not supposed to look at them based on their histories. Mm. Okay? So, you're not supposed to look at this one. This one has criminal records. Mm. I look at her differently. Yes. From maybe somebody who has come to me and I know she's a virgin. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're getting what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yes. So, I'm, I'm not supposed to look at them based on their history and or based by their social class. Mm. Because that is a mistake that most shepherds mm. fall into. You look at somebody, you look at their history. You look at somebody, you remember that their grandmother did something to your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You look at somebody, you see this one is pure. She's a virgin and she loves the Lord. And mm -hmm. maybe she's the worst cook. Because you're looking at her based on social spectrum and mm -hmm. other things. And so you will miss a lot of things. You will not bring in the gold that is in them that you the shepherd were supposed to bring out the gold yes and remove the dirt and prepare them to be meaningful vessels in the house of god amen so when you judge according to the flesh as a shepherd you have miserably failed mm. as a shepherd 
and you will have caused a big problem to the body of Christ. In fact, you are amputating the body mm, mm, mm -hmm. because you are judging after the flesh, yes. not after of how things are in the spirit. You are not drawing them. I, I, I would like to challenge shepherds. How many times do we sit down with our flock, with our sheep, and ask them questions about things that will make you understand them a little bit better? Mm. Know what mm. are their potentials? Mm. What are their abilities? Yes, there are other physical potentials, but they are also spiritual potentials. Mm. They are treasures. Some of them are inborn and done. So, when I look at this scripture yes. in as a shepherd, it challenges me. Mm. It challenges me that I'm supposed to come to I, I'm supposed to shepherd with, with with the grace of God and with the eyes of the Savior. I'm looking at the sheep with the eyes of the Savior. I don't know whether I'm I'm, I'm getting I'm getting you. I'm, getting, yeah, I'm, I'm getting, looking at yeah. the sheep with the eyes of the Savior, with the eyes of love, with the eyes of how can I help this one to be who God wants her or him to be. So I think I have said what was. <laughs> well, it is beautifully put. Thank you so much, Pastor Sarah. Exactly. It is beautifully put that there's a problem with the shepherding in our current modern day contemporary society where as pastor Sarah put it we judge men and when i say men i touch both ends male or female yeah. we judge men by their shortcomings mm. based on their history based on what they did two weeks ago in the case that for example uh maybe a person stumbled he's a believer but he or she happened to have stumbled and uh, he was caught unawares. And then in, the, in, in, in that case, uh, we end up picking, uh, you know, we have become better than BBC and we are more accurate than oh CNN. My, yes. oh and we oh begin my. to create news as though we have, uh, uh, as though we are registered or licensed by the enemy to mm. do these things. And that has become the area where people are spiritually shattered. <clears throat> people are spiritually shattered and people lose confidence in that which should have been the point of their hope in regards to I'm born again. I love the church of Christ. I love the people of God. And they have nowhere to cling to because there is no shoulder to cry on. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem. And if you're a shepherd which is actually to mean a pastor and you're watching this video, please consider the facts as they have come. These are facts that have been approved of God. Mm. So consider these facts and let us handle the sheep with eternal. Jesus speaking to Peter said, Peter, do you love me? He said, Lord, I love you. He said, Peter, come on. Do you love me? He said, I love you. Then he asked him for the third time. The Bible says, Peter got offended. He said, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, tend my sheep. Now, when it comes to tendering the sheep, mm. there are things you have to overlook mm. and go to go deeper into what Pastor Joseph began saying, the divine me. Overlook the flesh me and check into the chambers of the divine me, the self-evolving me, the I am that I am in me that is calling out. That is what you look after and treasure. God bless you. Um, I would want to hear from the billionaire here, uh, by the grace of God. And the reason why I've skipped Pastor Patrick and the prophet Samuel, uh, I, I know there are bombs that are coming. So allow me to skip <laughs> as we talk of uh, the billionaire. Talk to us. What is your perspective uh, in, in the shortest time possible so that we can go to the next question as we bring it to a closure? What does it mean from your perspective by the Spirit when it says we regard no man after the flesh? What does that mean in your own approach of scriptural uh, analysis? I think it has been said, it has been said a lot enough, mm. I guess. We 
are not supposed to see people after the flesh. When they get born again, especially, according to that verse, mm. whoever is in Christ <coughs> is a new creation. Mm. When you are in Christ, <coughs> it means you and Christ are one thing. You you carry the what can I say the genome yes. of Christ. Yes. <coughs> you carry Christ af- after he resurrected, because according to the scripture, you do not see the, the Christ before resurrection. Right. Yeah. Christ after he resurrected. You are not supposed to look upon the physical. When I when it speaks upon the new creation, it speaks the the divine nature, the the, the more spiritual, how <coughs> God sees, not how men see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, the billionaire. Uh, he's talking about uh, we we look. If I'm to pick what he's saying accurately, he's saying we should look people according to the viewpoint of the resurrected Christ. Uh, That everyone that is born of God, born from above, has captured, or rather is captured in the image of the resurrected Christ. Is that what you're saying? Yes. God bless you. So you can see, everybody that is born of God has been captured in the image of the resurrected Christ. Talk to us, Pastor Patrick. What's your perspective in this regard? Regard no man of the flesh. Hey, this one is a big one. Okay. <clears throat> therefore, regard. Therefore, from now now on, we regard no one, no man after the flesh. I believe from what I'm seeing, this verse is like uh, we knew Jesus after the flesh, but after he died and went on the cross when he resurrected, the one who rose from the dead was a glorified one. Mm. He's not the same, he's not, he, he, okay, he's the same person, but he's not the same we were seeing before he died. So I, I think Paul is, is using Christ to compare us. He's using that, that in the mythology. The comparison. Yes. He's using that comparison to teach us something. The person who we knew before he got born again, after after encountering Christ, after receiving Christ, after believing Christ, after joining Christ, that person, Ama, that flesh we knew before joining Christ, that flesh was buried. It is not mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. What we are seeing physically, actually, it is a, it is it is it is like a lie. The flesh you're looking at and using to make decisions, you're looking at the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. You're looking at the wrong thing to make conclusions. Look at the person in the spirit. Look at the look at the new creation. Look at the new creation and use it to make conclusions or decisions about the person. I think that is what it means. Amen. If I look at the physical person, I, I'm looking at the height. I'm looking at the whatever the physical attributes or the attributes of the flesh, even the characteristics. I'm looking at the wrong thing. I should be looking at this at the spiritual person, if I can use those terms, or I'm looking at at the new creature. Okay, I'm looking. I should be looking at the at the resurrected Jagi. I should be looking at at, at this prophet <coughs> in his res- resurrected status, not in his the, the one I'm looking at now. Mm. That is the person I'm supposed to be considering. If I'm looking at, at myself, even if I'm considering myself, I should be considering myself from my resurrected. Position, not from this one. I'm, 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 I'm experiencing currently. Mm-hmm. I think that is what um, this creature is supposed to be to me, according to me. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It, it is well explanatory, viewers. I will not add anything to it. Let me hear. Let us hear now from the prophet Samuel Jaggi. What, in your perspective of scriptural analysis and by the leading of the Spirit, do you perceive the Scripture is trying to convey to the saints as far as? Considering no man after the flesh, even though we knew Christ after the flesh. Talk to us. Now, when the scripture is talking about uh, considering man not after the flesh, if God is trying to bring man yes. to the place of originality. Mm. Uh, 
Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, Let's make man in our own image mm. after our likeness and let that man have dominion. Now, going back to the history, we find that thing was destroyed, mm. was marred, was um, meant of no relevance. But Jesus comes and restores and upgrades the standard mm. more than the first Adam. And he's telling us now, do not look at men. We no longer regard man according to the present status in which they are in, but we should view them from the point of originality. Mm, mm, mm. This original man was pure. Mm. This original man was as he is. Yes. So was he on earth. And so God is trying to take us and is telling us, guys, stop looking at man. Stop looking at your fellow brother from the praise of the imperfection, from the praise of the fall. Guys, look at your brother from the praise of perfection. That which was originally decoded from heaven mm. is what God is telling us. Don't regard man according to this. And now scripture is saying, if we are not regarding Christ uh, according to the status of him being the Christ who was on earth, we are looking him at the, in the place of his ascension and glorification. Mm. We should not feel a man who is in Christ. Oh God, help me. We should not view anyone who has come to Christ in the paradigm of the foreign one. Mm. Mm. But we should see him from his status in glory. glory. Amen. In Amen. Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Prophet God. I, uh, viewers, there's something you have said that I want to say as we wind up, as we finish. Mm -hmm. uh, you have spoken about the original condition mm -hmm. that was designed from Zion. Yeah. That that original condition that was designed from Zion concerning man, that is where our focus should be. Should be to every person we see. Yeah. We should view them we should eat. thank you holy spirit we should interpret man mm, mm, mm. according to that original design yes yeah. that was revealed from zion yeah that's what you were saying yes thank you sir now in the final wind up as we find wind up yeah. yes please i just wanted to add something on from this verse 17 all things are passed away behold all things have become new I'm just getting at this. Old things are passed away. Old things represent the flesh. Mm -hmm. And old things have become new represent the new man. This that has become new is what we are supposed to be considering. Mm -hmm. Not this which has passed away. Yes. So the flesh which we are considering is what has passed away. Mm -hmm. Just as Christ, the, that old body that he had on the earth, it passed away when he came from, from, the, from when he resurrected from the other side. He was a new creature. Yes. That is... That new creature is the one we are supposed to be engaging. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That is what I wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you. Let, thank me, you. let me add something. Yes. You, you've just touched it. The original man from Zion. Viewers all over the world, I want you to understand that the original man from Zion <coughs> was not in a foreign state. Mm -hmm. Neither was he in an imperfect state, 
he was named a son mm. of God. Wonderful. And now, what the father is recalibrating is sons who are operating not from the formation of the flesh, but according to the formation of the spirit. Thank you, thank you, prophet of God. Thank you, viewers. There you have it once again. And um, uh, it is as clear as the light of a noon day. So I want you to get these things into your spirit. Let it recalibrate you. And please recalibrate your understanding of scripture. And just one more roundup question as we call it a day. Uh, I want to ask um, Pastor Joseph. Yeah. There are two realities that we see. Huh? The life in the flesh. All right. And the life in the spirit. Now, the two realities as it stands, the life in the flesh and the life in the spirit gives us another perspective of view where in every dimension of life, there is a law governing that life. When we come to the life in the flesh, there is a law governing the life in the flesh. And I'm going to read it. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 and 2 quickly as we finish, as we give it a one more wind up, round up. Uh, Romans 8 verse 1 to 2, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Verse 2, it says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of <coughs> sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilling us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So Pastor Joseph what is this law that is operational in the flesh that is different from the law that is operational in the spirit. Give us a synopsis. What is the law of the flesh? And what is the law of the spirit? And how do you tell a believer living in the living according to the law of the flesh? How can you tell this person is living according to the law of the flesh? Because there is for sure manifestation that gives us evidence to tell who you are nation community. And there is the manifestation that tells who you are nation quarrel. What are those manifestations that are characterized through the implementation of the law? What how do you tell? What is this law of the spirit? Please, as we wind up, let's crack that. What is this law of the spirit? And what is the law of the spirit? And how do you tell somebody who is in the spirit by the law and somebody who is in the flesh by the law? Pick it from there as we give it one more round out. Okay. Um, the law of the spirit. Yes. Love. Love is the law of the spirit. Yes. Because love is the highest form of consciousness. Mm. Love is <clears throat> the highest form of intelligence. Yes. And it says the law of the spirit. When you read, uh, when you read this, it says, uh, "For the law of the spirit of life." Yes, in 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 Christ Jesus, uh, Christ is the embodiment of the love of God in flesh. Amen. Is the humanity of God manifested, and in Him there is the fullness of God. Yes. So Christ being love, the only law that applied in Christ, and the only law that dictated everything that Christ did is love. Amen. That is why when he is, uh, when you look at the book of um, John chapter 15, he's talking about love a lot. Yes. And he says, a new commandment I give unto you. Yes. And it's love. 
is love. Because love encompasses the reality of the spirit. Mm. And love encompasses the consciousness of the divinity of man. My goodness. And we now speak about the law of death and sin. Yes. The law of death and sin. Now, whenever we speak about law, and whenever we're speaking about law, we're talking about a principle. Mm. Uh, uh, at the Garden of Eden, because the genesis of the flesh, you have to go back to the Garden of Eden. Yes. When you go to the Garden of Eden, the Bible says there is the tree of life. Yes. And the tree of the knowledge of good, good and evil. And evil. Mm. Mm. Now, whenever we speak about life, we're speaking about consciousness. Mm. When we speak about knowledge, we are also speaking about consciousness. Yes. yes. So the tree of life. That is a consciousness by itself. Yes. And the knowledge of good and evil, that's a consciousness by itself. By itself. <coughs> these so, are two realities of consciousness. Yes, these are two realities of consciousness. Mm. And when Adam partook of this tree, he partook of a specific consciousness. Conscious. Ah, ah. Because ah. those two trees yeah. are <laughs> different <laughs> dimensions of consciousness. Oh, oh, it's a consciousness. Mm. Whenever you hear knowledge, mm. there can be no knowledge without consciousness. Mm. Because consciousness is a state of knowing. Mm. To be conscious is to know that you're conscious. Yes. And consciousness is a principle to itself. So when Powerful. Adam partook of this tree, yes. he partook of a specific consciousness and of a principle of that consciousness. Yes. The principle of that consciousness applied to his own consciousness. Mm. Because that consciousness became a law he, to him, so he, he was bound to that law. Yes, and the reality oh of that law God. is expressed by God. When God says, "The day you eat of it, you, you shall, shall die. die," you shall die. Mm. The day you eat of it, mm. you shall die. And the prophet put it so well that the original design of man mm. was corrupted. Uh, now, uh, whatever is corrupt does not function according to the original God. intent. Very true. Powerful. So that means please, something that please, Pastor Joseph, yeah. I want you to repeat that statement while looking at the camera. Okay. With with all audacity and brilliance and authority. <laughs> Talk to our viewers. Yeah. That is powerful. Dear mm. dear viewers, whatever is corrupt does not function according to original Yes. Mm. 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 So the very capacities of man, mm. the very capacities of man mm. were lessened. The, the very potential, the infinite multiple uh, potentials mm. residing in man, mm. the actualities of that potential, which are actual by themselves, mm. because actuality is potentiality and potentiality is actuality, they were lessened. Are you telling me, Pastor Joseph, the actuality of the original man, the degree at which he was vibrating yes. from, yes. was yes. lowered? Low. It's like let, let me use layman's language. This bulb yes. went big from the actual brightness it was. Yes. My goodness. So that means when you talk about coming to a lesser vibration, that means coming to a reality of lesser principles and lesser laws. Uh, That's why the Bible is speaking about the law of sin and death. death. It's a law, but it's at a lower. It's yes. at a lower frequency. Yes, running it, a lower frequency. Yeah, it is at a lower frequency. My God. And that law in and of itself. That law in and of itself, that's what it was, is the law of sin and death. So the function of that principle is a constant awareness of sin, sin consciousness, rather than Christ consciousness. Aha. Uh -huh. That is what makes the believers and most born again people, everything they perceive, they perceive from the lens of sin. Yes. My and goodness. whenever, whenever, whenever you are wearing glasses, I wear, I wear glasses. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, the best example is if you've ever gone to watch a movie at the theater mm. and you put on 3D glasses, yes. they will always, always amplify what you're beholding. Uh -huh. So when man now fell and was looking at things from this other consciousness, sin consciousness, mm. it amplifies sin. It's an amplification of who and what you want. Well, the glasses of sin. Yes. Mm. So putting on those so it glasses makes the, It makes the very... Um, sin object or, or the very object of sin yes. become more real. Yes. Uh, sin, is, and, sin is deciding how you are seeing. Yes. Mm. And now the, the interesting part as well is that this knowledge of good and evil, mm. <clears throat> the perfection of that knowledge and of that consciousness 
is within the consciousness of the tree of life. Because ah. when we speak about the tree of life, Please yeah. rewind that part <laughs> while looking at the camera. Yeah, there so are things I want our viewers to capture. This is very powerful. Please speak it with authority, sir. So the reality, the actual reality, according to the divine counsel of God, mm. of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, is concealed and perfected in the tree of life. Because wow. the knowledge of life wow. involves... The knowledge it, it actually involves a coming to the knowledge of the possibilities of life, mm. and good and evil was a possibility of yes. life that yes. was actualized. Mm. So to that us. possibility in and of itself is conceived there. So if Adam and Eve would have partaken of the tree of life, this knowledge they would have had this knowledge without being corrupt. Ah, wow, 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 wow. I, I wow, stand. Wow, I, I wow. stand, viewers. Wow. Allow me to stand because <laughs> the, I told you, hey. I now confirm hey. his word. The bench is getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is super. This is super. That hey. man was to access <sighs> the knowledge of good and evil. With the exemption of corruption. corruption, had he eaten from the tree of life? Mm. Mm. My God! When, and Christ. when Adam eats the fruit and God has a counsel with himself, mm. God says the following Behold, man has become like one, one of us. us. Uh-huh. He became like one of us, not according to the ordained path. Mm. So he became like one of us. But from a corruption mm. version, yes. without from a corruption yes. version, yes, without following the, the, yes, not following the, the correct system. protocol. So he was to be like one of them, with the exemption of, uh, with the exemption of acquiring corruption. Mm. Mm. Prophet of God, remember what I say. Prophet, Prophet of God, wait, wait a minute, sir. Prophet of God, you have just sealed this thing. You have just sealed this thing. You have hammered this thing. My goodness, please, sir, pick it from there. Remember, we, uh, considering time, please, sir, remember what we'll pick it from next time. Eh? Man, don't shake it, brother. Remember what I said. Yes. I said, viewers all over the world, that the original intention of the Father mm. in making man was to have a son. And this son was to be a reflection of the father mm. here on earth functioning from the place of perfection mm. and in the place of perfection we don't have corruption hallelujah mm. thank you prophet of god you have put it precise straight you've hammered it on the point no further ado. Let's hear from you. What is your understanding as far as that is concerned? Well, I have nothing to add there. The bomb has already been gone off. <laughs> so I, we, we, we can say pass. <laughs> All right. You hear from him? Pass. Let's come to Pastor Patrick. I was following her. I forgot about myself. <laughs> <laughs> you also want to ask to pass? No, pass, pass. If, if if I remember, I had something to say. Pastor Sarah, I forgot it. pick something from what has been echoed. There's, some, there's something about, you asked about the law of the flesh. Yes, the law of, of, of sin and death and the law of the spirit of life. Yes. Yes. Um, there's something that was on my mind about Galatians 5. Mm. Uh, Galatians 5 tells us about the works of, of the flesh being clear mm. because you asked can you be able to know that was the original question yes. can you be able to know that someone is walking after the flesh yes and that someone is walking after the spirit mm. so um, there is galatians 5 which is very clear mm. anyone can read even now uh, galatians like, 5 from verse 19 yeah mm. yeah it talks about uh, the, manifestations the manifestations of the flesh, of the flesh. Uh, those things tre treachery um, jealousy. jealousy, fights, and mm. all those things, witchcraft, yes. all those things. 
and then he also goes ahead uh, to tell us about the characteristic of the spirit. Of the spirit. <clears throat> and today we, we mentioned in the chat, we talked about patience yes. a little bit. There is love. We started by talking about love. Yes. There is love, kindness, goodness, you know, those beautiful things. So yes, you can be able to know mm. whether someone is walking after the flesh or after, after the, the spirit. spirit. Yeah. Okay, your characteristics will easily Tell. sell you. Mm -hmm. You'll be sold, and it will be biblical to judge you accordingly. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There's also something else in some uh, chapter one. Yes. I love talking about some chapter one. From verses one, blessed is a man who does not does not sit. There is a seat. There is a stand. There is the walking. And there is a walking. They okay. forgot to put the sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. <laughs> so that then yes. So the strange thing is that this scripture says, "Blessed is the man." Yes. Blessed. Mm. Yes. The one who qualifies for a blessing is the one who is being described by where he sits. Where he walks and where he stands. Yes. Sit, stand, walk. Sit, stand, and walk. Mm. Okay? Mm. When you look at it on both sides, whether the righteous or the unrighteous, you'll be able to know who loves mm. God, who's walking after the flesh, and who's walking after the spirit. Where do they sit? Where do they walk? Where do they stand? Where do they stand? So, the 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 sitting council yes the in swahili for those who don't understand swahili the sitting council we say kikao uh -huh. so you are saying the kikao where they sit yes will tell us if yes. this person walks yes. in the spirit or in the flesh or in the flesh yes hey, that the, is strong that is strong said, it looks flat but very strong the white man said mm -hmm. show me your friends and i'll tell you your character mm -hmm. yes, yeah. yes 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 even us ministers of the gospel mm -hmm. there are those that have compromised let me just put it plainly. Yes, look yes. at the camera with a very... Please zoom your eyes to the camera. Yes, yes. <laughs> with a very serious eye. Mm -hmm. There are some who have compromised. Yes. And there are those who have said, we will not compromise. Mm. And you will know a compromised preacher by the company they keep. Mm. Thank where you. they sit, Thank you. where they walk, yes. and where they stand. Thank you. Their principles will tell you, what kind of a preacher this is? Oh, yes. A new sheep, because you like being misled. <laughs> <laughs> and you like being uh, taken away by braggadocio and uh, big words. I'm a plagabastic. Look at the sitting. The walking. Look at the walking. Yeah. And, and the standing. Look at the standing. Of the preacher. Of the preacher. My goodness. Of your shepherd. This is super hard. Like you, will Pastor know, Pastor you, will know, you will know whether they are in the flesh, they are walking after the flesh, or they are walking after the spirit. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Pastor Sir. That is beautiful. Amen. Please, because of time, let me just affirm what you are saying. Please allow Pastor Patrick pick it <laughs> with all due respect because of the saving okay, of time, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, we are going to have this session very soon they are still in mombasa so viewers all over the world we are going to have kingdom transformative conversation tomorrow be rest assured we'll pick it tomorrow with an incoming guest reverend laura will be joining us so i hope you are not offended when i hold the hose's mouth from the prophet i want to hear from patrick as we wind up and pick it from there in our next episode too Yes, Pastor Patrick, please. Yeah, the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and, sin and death. Mm. Okay, how I get that verse is that uh, when Christ, God in the flesh, mm. came on earth in the business of redemption to redeem man, the, what he did, what he achieved in that business of redeeming man, he activated the law of the spirit of life. Yes. The law of the spirit of life was in him, but when he appeared on earth as man, God, man, joined together, mm -hmm. and he 
in the likeness of sinful flesh, although his flesh was not sinful, mm -hmm. but he appeared as sinful so that he might take this. He, I, um, sometimes you say he deceived, <laughs> he, he, he tricked the enemy. Yes. Eh? And they pounded all sin on him because they thought he qualified to be to, to carry sin, even though he was better than that. But it's like you you trap someone, he comes in after he's coming, after he has entered, he discovers I was tricked, but he cannot get out. Mm -hmm. So he took all that in, and through that law of the spirit of life, which was activated, because Christ is the is he, is he the like the factory, mm -hmm. the factory of life. Yes. The life that was in him, he 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 activated it in such a way that that life mm -hmm. Could be experienced by a human being on earth yeah that thing which people could only ascend like uh, enoch yes he could only get it after going there that technology christ made it possible for a human being who is on earth here a normal human being to, to actually have that life and still be alive on this earth in a seemingly a human being who is seemingly is seemingly sinful, seemingly weak, seemingly with the with, with infirmities, yes, but still able to express that divine life. That's why you can feel sick, but you're praying for someone and he's healed. And you are not healed. And you're not you're 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 you still feeling like you're weak, but you are releasing strength to someone else. Virtue is living you. <coughs> Virtue is living you and healing someone. You are feeling the way you're feeling, but you are changing lives. By the things you're doing, I think that is part of the, the part of that thing. Although in in a, in a law, in a lower in a lower reality of it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, prophet, it's like you captured something in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Please, in a quick rush. Yeah. Uh, what I'm what I'm getting out of all this, uh, according to my brother uh, Joseph said, is that the law of sin and death, and death. is a conscience. Yes, consciousness. Yeah. yeah, and the law of life in Christ is also a conscious. Mm. So, what I can say uh, is that there is hope for those who are still operating in the law of sin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, the only way to get out of that is to tap into the law of Christ, mm -hmm. the law of life. Mm. That is the only way. Just to make a Quick switch. Yeah. Mm. Quick switch. Do, uh, do not look up, down upon yourself mm. wherever you are. Do not get intimidated. Do not, uh, what can I say? Do not uh, lower yourself. You just have, you, you have a decision to make. You have, uh, you have a chance. To make it right. To make it right. Right now. Just switch. Just make, make make a prayer to God. Or maybe you can take somebody on a prayer who wants to switch. There's somebody might, might be willing to switch. Maybe you can lead somebody in prayer. As the Spirit of the Lord lead you as we wind up, please. Yeah. Just look at the camera directly. Uh, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I took this opportunity to touch Whoever it is, whoever it is that wants to make a decision from the heart, he, has, he acknowledges downfall, his shortcomings. Mm -hmm. Father Lord Jehovah God, I pray that you touch him, touch his conscience, mm -hmm. recalibrate his understanding, mm -hmm. and let him or her live up to his own according to his own purpose, the way you commissioned it from the beginning mm. concerning this person's life. Father, Lord Jehovah God, release your grace mm. and let the blood of Christ mm. wipe away all shame, mm. wipe away all sin. Mm. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Mm. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much, prophet of God. Viewers, there you have it. This brings us to the end of our today's transformative kingdom conversation. I can tell you as sure as you can think as I think that the time has run so quickly 
that I, I'm shocked that already we have covered half an hour. I'm surprised. It's so fast. It's so moving. And tomorrow, by the grace of God, we'll pick it from where we have just left. And tomorrow, I want to prepare your minds and I want to prepare my guests because we are going to have the same team with us tomorrow. I want us to prepare us even as we will consider 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. I'm just going to read it as the host guest will go and recalibrate as we will pick it from where I've read. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, the scripture says, for he has made him to be seen for us. He has made him to be seen for us. He who knew no sin. There's someone who knew no sin. That was made by another to be seen for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Therefore that brings us to the end of our today's session. This is your brother, your host, your friend, a fellow York servant, the gospel. Joker is my name, precious saint. Voice of thunders, the divinity of expression I reveal in Christ. Until we meet again, to all our viewers, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you pleased. You can visit uh, my details at the end of this video if you are led by the Spirit to sow an offering to this ministry to be a blessing and to help us continue being online and being live <coughs> as we come into your home screens, into your smartphones and into all the gadgets you're using. Please visit the end of this video. There are two things I've put there. I've tagged an executive table and an executive chair and I'm trusting God for those who are led by the Spirit to support in the purchase of those two items. A chair and a table. I'm setting up a live streaming studio in my house for our YouTube live streaming program and this will only be possible if you tap into the atmosphere and be a blessing to us the supportive uh, channels <coughs> of communicating the finances are appearing right now at the bottom of the screen please pick up that number you can communicate to me through that number appearing on 0725 plus 254 that's the kenyan code plus 254 725-535-802. It's the same number you can use for M-Pesa, for SendWave, for World Remit, and you can also communicate your finances through my PayPal address, which is houseofthunders at gmail.com. And if you are in any, if you are in none of those is conducive for you, you can visit my bank details at the end of this video. Until we meet again, the Lord bless you will keep you. My viewer, host, guest, look at the camera and what do we say to them as we wind up? Shalom. 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 The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.